Hello everybody, Josh12 back here again with another video and I'm here with my official review for Marvel's Captain America Civil War. Now of course if you haven't seen this movie, please go check it out because this review will contain spoilers. But that being said, let's get into the newest MCU film. Now of course, Marvel's Captain America Civil War is directed by the Russo brothers, Anthony and Joe Russo, and of course is produced by Kevin Feige and stars Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans and is loosely based off the Civil War storyline from Marvel comic books. And at the end of the day, before before we get into more logistical things with this film, I want to quickly mention that in this video and in this review, I don't really want to compare DC and Marvel. I know that's been going a lot, uh, like around a lot with you know internet YouTubers and movie reviewers comparing it to Batman Easter Man, Dawn of Justice. Even though they do have a lot of similarities, they are two completely different films that follow different storylines. And at the end of the day, all I'm going to say if I can comment on this kind of comparison with these films is that Captain America Civil War basically defines or at least illuminates the fact that DC and Warner Brothers don't understand their universe and don't understand how to make great films within this genre. Captain America Civil War is loosely based off Civil War, but it does its own thing, and that's what's magnificent about it. And it's also the first film within this Phase 3, and of course the ending of the Captain America trilogy, as Kevin Feige likes to call it. And at the end of the day, I've been a huge Captain America fan. I love Cap, he's my favorite Marvel superhero, right up there with Spider-Man, which is also included in this film. But at the end of the day, I feel like the great thing about this film, in comparison to other movies like this, or even the comic book, um, or very much like the comic book, is that it just completely tears you apart. This movie completely is a very political, very similar to Winter Soldier, but more or less a very ideal kind of conflict with everybody. It's a film based around political ideology and way people and these kind of superhero characters deal with it in comparison to others and it's really awesome to see that go down. I think the Rooster Brothers and the writers and everyone involved with this film did an amazing job taking those elements from the comic and bringing it into the real world without beating you over the head in the fact that it's the real world in comparison to other movies. But with that being said, Captain America Civil War pretty much has various things going on for it. It has a lot of events leading to these characters having to battle each other as we all know team are you team cap are you team iron man it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because as in the comic and with this movie it doesn't matter because the movie is about ideals and how you deal with them and it's really all about two characters that really love each other and really have admiration and a lot of respect for one another have to go to blows and it's very interesting and compelling to see that kind of stuff go down but at the end of the day this movie also has a lot of cameos it's basically Avengers 2.0 2.5 if you will and at the end of the day I feel like every single a uh, bit of character development that was done for every character was done amazingly. Every character that does cameo within this film, like Black Panther, Ant-Man or Giant Man, if you will, Scarlet Witch, The Vision, Black Widow, you know, uh, Rhodey, freaking War Machine, rather, and, you know, Hawkeye, everyone in between, Spider-Man, everyone in between gets their moment in the sun, if you will, and it's done just amazingly. There's just no other way to put it. This is just an awesome, badass film. At the end of the day, the plot is pretty much all about Zemo, Daniel Bruce's character, if I'm saying his name correctly. He is pretty much the main antagonist in this film, and I think he has to be, regardless of what anybody thinks, you know, Marvel is, you know, bad at attacking their villain characters with their movies. This has to be my favorite villain with all the MCU because he's the one who technically succeeds at the end of the day. He is the one who pretty much wins over the heroes because his main point of view, granted, he's very much different from the Zemo from the comic books, but at the end of the day, I feel like the, what he was trying to uh, accomplish with this movie or at least in the plot of this movie, was done awesome. It was so freaking awesome to just see that he was the one that caused all of this. He didn't want to start an army. He didn't want to destroy the world. He didn't want to control the world. He just wanted the Avengers, these superheroes that everyone praises, to go at each other's necks. And that's all he wanted. And he accomplished that goal. And at the end of the day, he kind of wins. Granted, it is a Marvel movie. It is a Disney movie. No one technically really dies. or There's no real gigantic casualties with the exception of War Machine kind of being paralyzed at the end of the day. But regar regardless of any of that, it's pretty much a win-win scenario with the villain in comparison to other movies. And I thought that was really great. And the, I think that also the great thing about the movie is 
the fact that they paid great respects to every character, Captain America and Iron Man. They are individually the best parts of this movie, and they have equal rights in this movie. They both make sense in their... all. Everyone is just at each other's throats, but you don't know which side to choose from because they're both right at the end of the day, and they're also both wrong at the end of the day. So it's really cool to see this story unfold with them. And I think the cool thing about it is, just because it had various cameos from various Avengers characters or Marvel characters that we're seeing for the first time, like Black Panther and Spider-Man, they don't compromise the ideals and the development of Cap and Iron Man. They don't do that. I mean, hell, Iron Man in this movie was so compelling as a character, I think Robert Downey Jr., destroyed it. He blew it out of the park in Cap's own movie. I mean, he just was a destroyer in this movie. And I think this movie did justice to the Iron Man character in a way that none of the Iron Man sequels or even maybe the Avengers film was capable of doing since the first Iron Man film in the MCU. I mean, Iron Man was so freaking awesome. I was completely team Iron Man throughout the movie. As much as I love Cap and he's my favorite Marvel superhero, I was completely team Iron Man, especially by the end. Granted, he was wrong a lot of the time, but at the end of the day, he believed in what he thought was right, and that's what you can say about the guy. And also, on top of that kind of stuff, he was trying to avenge his family's death. Because throughout the movie, you find out that Winter Soldier, other than Daniel's character as Zemo, is really the main reason for conflict within this movie. Which I thought was an interesting approach. I don't think it was the best approach, but I do feel like it definitely served a purpose and it really was executed well, even though I don't think like it was the best way to go. It was very cool to see that everyone is going to war because of this one character, and the fact that he really didn't do that much wrong, but his past is foreshadowing his future, and I think that was really great, the way the Rooster Brothers attacked that kind of scenario. Even though I feel like Winter Soldier shouldn't have been the main reason for conflict within the movie, I think it was done well, and it was very, it was written a masterful kind of, you know, execution. It was just for a storyline that really could have been suckish and ch completely destroyed everything was perfect. It was really awesome. And that goes along with every other character. Every other character's development, their story arc within this movie makes sense and you're completely with them. Granted, they may aggravate you, they may piss you off throughout the movie, but they do believe in what they believe and you can't take that away from them. It's their ideal and they be they're doing what they believe. They have to fight towards this you know, this contract that the, you know, the United Nations are trying to put through, through General Ross's character. Uh, William Hurt comes back to premiere as this character. He's influ in influencing Tony Stark. He's influencing the Avengers. He wants them to be taken down, if you will, which goes along with Winter Soldier's conflicts, which goes along with Daniel Zemo character um, conflicts, and it just completely destroys the Avengers eternally and externally, and it's really freaking great. With that being said, let's get into the cameos real quick. Spider-Man and Black Panther, those two are the highlights. Other than Cap and Iron Man at each other's throats because of Winter Soldier and everybody else in between, freaking Black Panther and Spider-Man were amazing. They were awesome additions. They did not take away anything from other characters' uh, limelights. They also added the movie in a big way. I feel like Chadwick Boseman was a perfect choice for Black Panther. He killed it. He was awesome. And Tom Holland was amazing as Spider-Man. I, I think even though it was just a small cameo, well, not really a, a super small cameo. He did have a lot to do with the movie more than what I expected him to do. However, Spider-Man in this movie is hands down, without having to see his movie, was because of Sony and my lack of interest from Sony, he is my favorite Spider-Man. Granted, I will state that Tom Holland's performance was great. Uh, physically, I just don't know about the voice. I feel like, I know he, they're going for a very, very, very young version for Spider-Man. However, i just not really big on the voice. I feel like they could have just... Tr he should have tried to get a little bit more of a New Yorker voice, and if he wasn't going to do that, it, it just in general, his voice just sounds like he's trying too hard to be American, if you will. It, I don't know, it just, or, or at least too hard to be urban America, if that makes any sense. It just really didn't, it, it kind of killed it for me. With his, uh, his appearance was great. I think he was great. Spider-Man was awesome. He destroyed this movie in a great, big, awesome way, but... The voice just kind of killed it for me. And on top of that, Aunt May. She's just way too hot. No offense to Melissa Tomei. She's fucking phenomenal. And she's beautiful. But she's just too beautiful to be Aunt May. I'm just going to say it. I'm pretty sure a lot of people also have stated this. But it's just too much. There's too much hotness of an Aunt May in this screen. It's just too much. But with that being said, 
Black Panther and Spider-Man are amazing. They're highlights, and they're pretty much, this movie sets them off perfectly for their solo adventures in the MCU, and I can't wait to see that. Moving on for that, everyone else is great. Vision and Scarlet Witch were another standout in this film that really was amazing. I think their relationship and how it's growing was an interesting approach from Disney, considering it's a robot and a girl getting together. That's kind of creepy uh, in a weird, freaky kind of world, so granted things can go down but I feel like the way they approached their characters and the relationship was amazing. But with that being said, I pretty much have been very overly positive with this movie uh, with this movie in this review. That's mostly because there's not really that many negatives I have with the film. Granted, I do have a lot of nitpicky things that I can just like sit down and just say, well, I didn't really care for that. I don't really like that. Like I will state that I wish the villain Zemo was a little bit more in your face. I feel like he was way too behind the scenes, which kind of bothered me. Even though I feel like he was the most brilliant, brilliantly accomplished villain in the MCU, I feel like we should have seen more of him because I think Daniel's performance was great. Um, secondly, I feel like the jokes, the comedy with this film was a little too cheesy. I mean, for a movie that's supposed to be the ending of a Captain America trilogy, if you will, um, even though we already know, you know, Chris Evans and Captain America are going to continue on from this movie, especially in Infinity War, but at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, the jokes were kind of unnecessary. For a movie that's supposed to, like, grab at your strings and, like, start pulling on them and start freaking, it was a real good gut punch, should have been a little bit more dramatic at times instead of being so overly jokey, and that's kind of something that really bothers me. Granted, it's a Disney movie, it's a Marvel movie at the end of the day, you can't have a complete, you know, gloomy freaking movie with that kind of template of a cinematic universe. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just feel like the jokes just weren't my cup of tea. Some of them were great, especially with Spider-Man and other characters like that. Like when Falcon and, you know, Bucky were like egging on Cap to like, get it. You know, like, it was funny. It was pretty funny. But doing it consistently all the time did get bothersome. But with that being said, there's not really that many negatives I have with the film. It's just a really good, well-made film. The Rooster Brothers top themselves again. The action is amazing. The fight choreography. I don't think any other director in the superhero business has really topped the Rooster Brothers when it comes to stunt work and fighting choreography. It's just phenomenal. If you thought Winter Soldier was awesome with the fights, this movie takes it to a whole nother level. The fights and action are awesome. The special effects are great. The costumes are amazing. The story is great. Everything about the Captain America Civil War is awesome. It definitely completely gives us a great green light to just run right through this MCU Phase 3 into a great, in a really great big bad way. But with that being said, that's pretty much all I can really say about the film. My final verdict for the film has to be a solid 9 out of 10. It was a good freaking badass movie. I loved it. I love the fact, I love the dramatics, I love the cinema. Everything about this movie is just awesome. It's just, it really took me from where I was, which was a very low, like, God, like, I don't really care about these superhero movies anymore to being like, I want to see more of this because it was just that great. It's just the Rooster Brothers, they know what they're doing, and it's just awesome. And also, granted, going back to my negatives, I will admit that the ending wasn't as great as I would have wanted, and the post credits. Of course, MCU is known for their post credit sequences. I really didn't care for them. Granted, they're supposed to set up Black Panther and Spider Man, but at the end of the day, they were kind of just unnecessary. They were just like, yeah, we already know Black Panther's coming, Spider-Man's coming, like, wow, technology signal thing, whatever. It just wasn't that amazing. I feel like they should have done something with the post credit scenes to set up Infinity War, considering the Rooster Brothers will be directing Infinity War, so I was hoping they could have done something with that, but overall, it was just whatever. It was okay, just not great. And of course, the ending, it, it almost sets it off the rest of the MCU, especially with these characters, very ambiguously. It's kind of up in the air. Like, will we see another Cap movie? Will Chris Evans, Steve Rogers continue to play with the, Cap, uh, with the Cap persona? What happens to the rest of the Avengers? Do they go off and continue saving people without the help of the United States and Iron Man? Like, what's going to happen with these characters post-Civil War? I guess we'll find out with Infinity War, but that's a long way, that's a long ways away. So I was hoping they could have concluded a little better, but at the end of the day, it's still a solid movie. My final verdict stands as a 9 out of 10. Let me know what you personally think in the comment section below. What were your personal thoughts on Captain America Civil War? I hope you guys enjoyed. Shameless plug time. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh12. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I hope you guys enjoyed, and this has been Josh12.